Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning. I hope it's not yet afternoon. I uh, want to thank LSE for the invitation. It's my first time to attend the Urban Age Conference. Therefore, it's a great honor and importance for Habitat. Uh, Habitat, uh, I'm in the Global Urban Observatory, was in charge of monitoring the Habitat Agenda and the Millennium Development Goals, some targets. We can sometimes ask why Habitat uh, is also dealing with health. Health is part of the Habitat Agenda, Chapter 2. Chapter 2 is related to social development, health. Uh, myself, I have interest in working on health since I joined Orc Macro in 92, I was coordinating the program Demograph and Health Surveys. After 10 years, 2004, I joined Habitat. Uh, therefore, when I joined Habitat, uh, I uh, uh, introduced uh, what we call health inequity uh, associated to SLUM. Uh, the definition at SLUM at this time, overcrowding was part of the definition of slums. Uh, but we are looking intra-city differential in terms of health and slum. Uh, today, I'm going to address two components. Sometime we can interchange them related to high density and overcrowding. Uh, it's my first time to make that comparison. I made it because there is always polemic where we believe that High density means overcrowding. And Habitat has great interest on high density because we still believe high density is very important for economy of scale and for many other uh, social services. I'm going directly to the presentation. I think I can use it. I think. Uh, yeah, uh, we, I will not go in detail, but we always know that <laughs> the first phase of urbanization uh, with all this epidemic and crime, cities were considered as uh, high morbidity. But with the development of medicine, the development of access to improved water, improved sanitation, uh, we, 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 it is observed almost everywhere that in terms of health and in terms of many other indicators, cities are better off than rural, but there are intra-city differentials. That's why in Habitat we have what we call the monitoring urban inequity program. Therefore, we are looking intra-city differential on health, intra-city differential. Uh, when we come, I'm not going to talk, but density is related to land in my paper, and overcrowding is related to housing. Uh, I will not go in detail on all the debate related to how to calculate density, but overcrowding in habitat, we consider a household is overcrowded if there is more than three person per room. We can ask, oh, three person is a lot. But myself, when I was doing the estimate for habitat, I found that if you use two person per room, you will say almost all African cities are overcrowded. Therefore, you cannot do any analysis. And finally, we <laughs> therefore, it's just operational. Uh, this is not applicable to many European countries. That's why this method, we are not using it to estimate overcrowding for European countries. We just use it to estimate overcrowding for Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Uh, the data we are using are from demographic health survey. Uh, we are collecting information on housing, information on maternal child health. In Habitat, we have now more than 300 demographic and mixed survey and we have more than 100 censuses. As I say in the beginning, uh, overcrowding has been long time associated to high population density, but my presentation is showing that there is not direct relationship between density and overcrowding. To do so, it's just uh, very simple. I just try to see if there is any relationship. As we can see, for, this is for Africa. The highest density was in Alexandria. The estimation of overcrowding is 2%. But if you look at uh, Madagascar, I don't have it here written, but the overcrowding is 
and it has a density less than 10 percent, uh, 10,000 per habitat. As we can show it, uh, I will not go detail of the as correlation, but it is very clear that there is no relationship. There are other factors. The same phenomena for Latin America, where you can see even there is no relationship, but when you look at the trend, you can see even there are cities who have high density. It's in Colombia, uh, Bogota, Cali, we have high density, but we have low co overcrowding compared to Nicaragua, uh, and so on. Asia is interesting. There is, uh, we can say, I think it's working, different trend. Asia, there is a relationship, but it's not 100%. It's about 30%, uh, we can say, of overcrowding can be explained by density. And uh, that is what uh, is showing. And if you remove uh, Cambodia, uh, the capital of Cambodia from this data, the 57, the correlation will become 45%, because uh, Cambodia can be a little bit outliers. And now you can see in Asia, there is a relationship. It's not a linear relationship, but at least we can say density can contribute to overcrowding, but there is many other factors. The other factors may be related to many other things, related to urban planning, housing market, living condition, family size and structure, or the social, economic, and cultural factor. I have not studied those here. It's just uh, some hypothesis I am putting for further study. The other question I was asking in my presentation is, what is the relationship between overcrowding and health? How overcrowding contribute to health? I, will, I focus only in African countries using what we call shelter deprivation. The shelter deprivation index allow to decompose overcrowding across all the basic services. In the presentation, the household who lack only overcrowding compared to households who lack improved water, improved sanitation, and so on, until multiple deprivation. Based on that, we just use, this is for Africa, I think is, yeah, that's the one. For Daria, we can see overcrowding is the yellow. Uh, for Cameroon, overcrowding has a negative impact on health only in condition of lack of basic services, improved water, improved sanitation, and durable housing. But if it is only overcrowding, you can see for many countries, even for Kenya, which considered has the country of slums, the relationship is not so significant. I did the same simulation for uh, I did the same simulation for acute respiratory infection, except uh, Uganda, where overcrowding play an important role, negative role on health. The question I look at now some countries where maybe it requires further research. And I try to check it. If you look at this one, Mozambique, Rwanda, Egypt, and Senegal. Yes. yes. If you look at uh, this graph with me, there is something when I found it, I say, how is it possible? When you lack only overcrowding, the prevalence of diarrhea is lower than if you don't lack anything. That means you have all the basic services. I went further to look at very carefully. The problem is due to the fact that the capital cities of Mozambique, of Senegal, have all the factor, other than the household factor was explaining prevalence of diarrhea, and they have very high prevalence of diarrhea. And since household, we have all basic services are on those countries, we can understand that. 
I will not, uh, I have two minutes. Let me just, uh, uh, I think, uh, skip. Uh, what we look at further is, I will skip this slide. Cities are not uniform. There is intra-city differential. And this is the case of Addis Ababa, where we can see the green, most of the green is Bole, is the city center administrative. But since now the expansion of the city was done in a very unplanned way, like uh, Akati, access to basic services has water, living area, sanitation was very low. Uh, this is a picture we have long time. You can see very clear, this is the city center. And the other part is the extension I was showing very clear. It's not the same as what we were showing related to Hong Kong. This is a very different picture. Uh, I took this picture in 2004 when I went to uh, Addis. Uh, when I estimate the, pop yeah, the same population of Addis of 90%, people say, no, it's not possible. But we have to understand there are some cities, there are slum cities, because there is no non slum area. Therefore, uh, the conclusion was how to take advantage of high density. Promote high density while avoiding overcrowding. Urban planning will play a big role with a social, integrated, connected, and compacted city. When promoting high density, land and housing shall be factor associate variables, accessibility to basic services, and this determines the extent to which a city takes advantage of being center of concentrated production and population and avoid the negative externality. Thank you. <laughs>